was approved when the navigator first went live. Why is it now not still approved? Are we on? Okay. Hi, everybody. Did everybody have a good lunch? Yeah. All right. Jeff tells me that we're streaming. So hi, everybody online if you're there. Um, we are going to do our seventh annual unsession. And for those of you who have not been here before, um, basically you have three minutes to come up and tell us about something cool or innovative that either you are doing or that's happening on your campus or that you're aware of that you want to share with the rest of the community. And I know that every single one of us here has something uh, that we could talk about. And, um, and so I want to make sure that everyone Everyone has time um, uh, to share what they would like to with the group and also that we document it. So if you go to that bit.ly um, URL, uh, bit.ly slash unsession2016, you'll find a Google Doc and on that Google Doc you can um, put your name and maybe a description of what it is that you want to share and if there's any links or a contact email or a number or a date or something that you want to share with the group, we're documenting it all there. And um, and then we will uh, we'll go in order um, and try and, uh, you know, keep to three minutes, everybody, and, and get to everybody. If there's any kind of a lull, I'm going to come out and grab you and bring you up here. And you know that I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, does everyone have the URL? bit.ly slash unsession2016? Okay. Um, and anyone who's watching virtually, you're welcome to um, uh, put some stuff down. And um, if you want anyone to say anything on your behalf, you can put it in uh, into a tweet um, to uh, Aaron or one of the Twitter team, and we'll make sure to get you uh, uh, in. All right, so let's go to uh, the Google Doc. And I will start us out. <clears throat> um, so the thing that I wanted to share with you, and if you go to that URL, you'll find a bunch of links there that I posted. I wanted to share with you the COAT professional development resources that we have planned for 2016. Um, and so at your leisure, you know, tonight after dinner when you are thinking about all the wonderful th things that we did today, uh, take a look at what's there. Um, also, if you are not yet a fellow, an, an Open SUNY COPE fellow, I would invite you to join. For those of you from Newton or anywhere else, and you know who you are, um, please join as a friend of SUNY. Uh, and that way we'll be able to uh, give you access to information and resources. It's really just me behind there and Aaron, so it's, we're not going to like, you know, sell your email address or anything to anyone. It's just us and it's only, it's our way to recognize you as a friend of SUNY and to communicate with you on some of the cool stuff we're doing. Um, and so if you're not, um, if you're faculty here or if you're an instructional designer or a librarian and are not yet um, uh, um, represented as a fellow, please join. Um, you know, what, some of the many wonderful opportunities that we have to engage in the co online community involve sharing and um, showcasing, and one of those events is the um, fellow chat. And so if you have a best practice or if you have some um, something that you do either in your online instruction or um, or for your faculty or something to do with online teaching and learning and would like to share that with all of us, you can submit a, a fellow chat. It's 20 minutes long during lunchtime. We also produce a white paper in conjunction with your fellow chat and also um, uh, create a an online space for you to continue the conversation on that topic beyond the end of that talk. And we do one a month. And so I invite you to submit a fellow chat. I'd love to see some uh, from the folks that are represented here. Uh, we also produce, Aaron and I produce a, um, a newspaper. Wait, I don't have my glasses on, hang on. Uh, oh, latest news for, from COAT. If you haven't seen our blog, the COAT blog, it's called COAT Hub, and we have all of the latest information and um, posts and, and uh, resources that are posted there. If you haven't seen it recently, I invite you to, to go take a look. We keep that um, well updated. Um, 
Aaron and I also produce a newspaper. It's curated by uh, by us, and um, I invite you. I have a testimonial from Vicki Sloan on, on the Gazette, so if you're interested, please subscribe. If you're interested in online teaching and learning or technology-enhanced instruction, I invite you to, um, to subscribe to that uh, publication. Um, the online COPE community uh, is also something that you could join in order to continue discussions like the ones that we're having here. There are lots of discussions and groups uh, to join and lots of resources that we push through that community. I also invite um, anyone um, to check out our um, 2016 online teaching ambassadors. The link is right here. Every campus was invited to yes. submit two online teaching ambassadors for this recognition. I have, and we're going to talk about it this afternoon, but I have about 56 uh, ambassadors that were submitted from 24 campuses. That means that some of you may not yet know about this program and may not yet have had the opportunity to either nominate or to understand anything about the program. So check those. Uh, um, those links out. Um, and then if you want to see the Flickr photos that we have for the group or you want to submit your own Flickr photos from this event to our group, I invite you to do that. And then when you see the slideshow in the morning or whenever I put it up, you'll be able to see your pictures there too and they will be part of the artifacts that we collect um, sort of to uh, commemorate this event together. Uh, and then um, you don't have to do this now, but um, at some point either during the summit or after the summit concludes, uh, please fill out the survey uh, to let us know um, what worked and what could be improved in terms of producing the, this event. You know, a lot goes into producing it, and we do our, our very best, but we can always improve, and so we really welcome um, and, uh, and would like to have your, your feedback on that. Um, so I wasn't keeping time. Who's keeping time? I don't know if I went over three minutes. <laughs> Okay, so who's the, who's the first one? Jeremiah, come on up. Where are you? Come on down. When the uh, enrollment growth management team, they said that. So I'm um, Jeremiah, if you guys don't know me, I'm from the University of Buffalo, and I'm trying to plug uh, our meaningful gamification conference when it comes up. So we have a research group at UB called the Meaningful Gamification Academy, and um, we're having a conference April 15th. It's free, it's at UB. Um, we have three speakers, so the first half will be speakers. We have uh, two researchers and then a practitioner. So you'll get the research aspect of it, and then you also get a practical side um, to it. <coughs> so that's the first half of the day. Uh, the second half is gonna be more hands-on, so if you actually want to gamify a class and where you're going to work with uh, myself and Reed and a bunch of other people who are uh, into gamification to help you, um, you know, gamify your class. So bring like a syllabus, and oh, and we have a module, that, an OER gamification module that we're going to be releasing as well. So anyone wants to learn about gamification, it'll all be up on our website, and hopefully somebody can tweet the website out or something like that. So I think that's less than three minutes. Hey, Nate Angel from Lumen Learning and Allison Brown from Gen SUNY Geneseo. Uh, can we use up Jeremiah's extra time? No, just kidding. <laughs> Navigate over. So, uh, those of you who were here yesterday may remember, ooh, reverse scrolling. Uh, may remember that uh, we led the workshop in the afternoon yesterday. Um, and I'll just, uh, for folks who weren't here, for folks who were, I'll just remind you that the activity was to take an existing Open SUNY textbook called the Information uh, Literacy Users Guide and augment that as a collaborative effort with additional um, open resources. So we went through a process of discovery and of evaluation and of actually remixing those new works into the, um, the open textbook, which is now the open textbook collaborative edition. Uh, and you can get to it from the links on the unconference page here. Uh, there's a, uh, I really have trouble with this reverse scrolling now. Uh, you can see the collaborative edition right here. Uh, and uh, we got several um, additional new resources added to this uh, open textbook to make it an even richer resource. 
One of the strengths of this model, though, is we believe that the um, collaboration that began here in the two hours that we spent doing it yesterday afternoon can continue now. We've enabled this site with um, an online annotation capability, which we can use together as collaborators to comment on areas of the work that are especially fine or might have suggestions for additional um, work that could be done. I will point out that a lot of folks um, still uh, had uh, some difficulties uh, with the nuances of open licensing and, and everything that that has to do. So I would uh, I would call out to folks to reach out to their librarians, especially who may be very well versed in these subjects. If you're working on anything that has to do with open educational resources, to get their um, expertise with the licensing issues. Um, so we hope to continue this further as one of the new models in Open City Textbooks 2.0, which um, Allison's team is, is working on, uh, and see if we can, together as a community, continue to build these richer works uh, collaboratively. Uh, so there's uh, all the links to get to the book and kind of check it out are in there. About 50 people in this room are actually full-blown editors of that work and continue to contribute to it even after this this time. So if you were in the workshop yesterday, you have your, uh, your ability to log in and edit it. Let us know if you don't see that capability or are having trouble with it. If anybody else wants to get involved who wasn't involved with the workshop yesterday, let us know. There's contact information on this uh, main web page that I first pulled up here. So I'm going to let Allison say a couple of things too. Hi. I also just wanted to highlight a couple projects out of SUNY Geneseo because um, I do some a lot of work with faculty members there that are integrating student creation projects in, um, into the classroom. Um, so one of those is um, a a National Book Review Month campaign that an English faculty member has started in the library, um, worked with him um, to create the website and this blog that um, that encourages faculty and students to submit um, book reviews of any kinds of books, and it's open to anyone, and they're all openly licensed. So this has just been a really um, fun uh fun project to work on, so I encourage you to check that out. And then we also have a student-led SUNY-wide um, literary magazine, and this is embedded in a course, and I work with the professor throughout the semester um, to walk the students through the publishing process, um, and then we end up with a published online magazine at the end of the uh, at the end of the course, and so that represents students from all over SUNY, so just wanted to highlight those. And we applied for six to eight more. I can't remember. All right. So I'm here to share with you um, some updates on the Blanket MOOC that just began and invite you to participate if you are not already doing so. Um, so Blanket uh, 2016 began on Monday. And this is a, a, an effort through the University of Central Florida uh, for those interested in learning more about uh, blended learning and blending your course. Um, it is a MOOC. It is a, uh, a global effort. There are um, all, all kinds of folks in there from all over the world. Um, and so if you are interested in participating, COAT has decided to partner with UCF this year and um, in an effort to help our faculty and uh, our instructional designers, our librarians kind of have more outreach on blended learning and learn more, uh, we have developed some cohorts. And so there's a COAT-wide cohort, which involves uh, campuses from all across SUNY who are taking this MOOC together. Uh, we have online discussion areas to, um, to kind of support that journey along the way. Um, and we'll be sharing some other resources as the course continues. And then we also have five local cohorts. So there are some campuses that are participating with a group of their own folks um, in this uh, activity alongside of us. So that's really exciting. So we have 28 participants in, in the code cohort, and we have 33 total across the five campuses um, at this point. But of course, because it's a MOOC and it's open enrollment, that's subject to change. So help help uh, change those numbers and make my stats out of date. I would love for you to do that. So um, the links take you to the course schedule and also the course to enroll. So this this link on Canvas, that is the LMS that's, that's being used for the course, that's where you can enroll in the course. And then the course schedule will give you an idea of the lay of the land. 
Um, don't let the course schedule intimidate you. It is flexible. If you miss a weekly webinar, they're always recorded. Um, those are accessible at any time. So you can pop in and you can be a lurker, which I did the first time I took a blend kit course. I just kind of poked around. The second time I took a blend kit course, I actually used and repurposed some of the materials. This is the third time I'm taking the blend kit course, and I'm actually going to try to do everything. So we'll see if I'm <laughs> successful. So, Okay. Oh. Should I, like, cheer? <laughs> we'll call Eric up and save the rest of the room. So I shared yesterday that um, most of the faculty at Binghamton University are not used to an instructional design process. So we have an intake process, which is a very active listening uh, questionnaire that we usually lead faculty through the first time so that we can focus our consultations on exactly what they need from us. And, and what we, the other part of this is that our popularity has grown on campus so much and our team has not. So what we have developed is a questionnaire using Qualtrics that involves skip logic and also piping logic. And this is a work in progress, and the example that I'm going to show you is uh, an instructional design assistant for flipping the classroom. So this is a particularly uh, focused questionnaire on flipping the classroom. We can give this to faculty before we meet with them the first time. It has some research-informed uh, resources with it. What they do is they go through and they answer all their questions. And like Nate, I'm going to have trouble with this reverse scrolling here. So I'm not as fast as my Mac. But all of these questions, they answer. There is no open-ended questions, which makes the skip logic and the piping work. So after they get through it, what they get is they get what I would refer to as a prescription, which has a lot of information for them to start absorbing. So once they're done with this, they get a page which gives them all of the resources based on what they answered. And they can print this page, they can review it. Um, it's very personalized, has some resources inside of it. Um, for this, we also have some common activities that we usually recommend for uh, flipping the classroom. So I had developed a matrix and split that matrix apart based on each question so that based on their answers, we can tell them what's going to be a challenge, what may, may not be suitable for a large class environment versus a small class environment. And it's just a kind of platform for us to kind of get going with them and start talking. I also developed one of these in collaboration with POSAC and, and Lisa Stevens for MOOC Decision Tree uh, and looking to do some uh, generic ones for instructional design process as well. I have the link in the Google document and I am looking for lots of feedback. So please send me email and let me know what you think. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm really excited about this activity, and um, <clears throat> I used it in a marketing class to start with, and uh, you know the the application there was pretty obvious. Uh, my students were building product pages, uh, corporate pages that uh, that were supposed to be what they would post on Facebook. Problem with doing that on the actual Facebook is that you know if you start using fictitious names and things like that, or or famous names, uh, the people at Facebook shut you down and close your account, and that's not good. They they don't like to have fake stuff up there. So I found this site that, called Fake Book, um, and it's it's been developed by a, a, a group in uh, in England that does all kinds of um, uh, educational tools and applications. And um, the cool thing about that is that the student gets an, a URL and they can share it with whomever they want. If they don't share it with anybody, nobody will ever see the page that they built. And um, the free version has ads kind of dis peppered on the sides and all, which are a little distracting, but, you know, for free, that's, that's not a problem. It's not actually that expensive to actually buy uh, a page that's ad free. And you, you know, you could assign it like you would a book and, and ask your students to, to buy an account if you wanted to. Um, I, uh, I was actually using this in the creation of a series of storyboards for a novel that I'm working on as part of my dissertation. And, um, 
the thing that I love about it is that I can, uh, you know, totally personalize the character, the main character that I'm working on. In this case, it's Raphael Heifelade, a character from Moore's Utopia. I'm writing a sequel to Moore's Utopia, uh, Utopia which is uh, illustrated. And uh, he was born in, uh, on March 9th, 1454. Uh, what sort of music would he like? Well, I've, uh, I've got music and, and, uh, and books here from his period of time. Praise of Folly by Erasmus, good friend of, of uh, this guy. Who are the characters? Who are the people that he would associate with? Here they are. Um, you might recognize this guy. This is Peter Giles. I, I modeled myself after, after him. There's, there's uh, Margaret Roper, Thomas More's daughter. Uh, this is the, the chair of the uh, theater department at Cuca College playing Thomas More himself. Um, and then, uh, you know, in the book, I've, I've uh, added illustrations. And so, you know, it starts out with posts from Raphael, and, uh, and it goes right through chronologically. Uh, some here, Peter Giles writes back to him, and they comment, just like they would on Facebook. So, you know, from a creative writing standpoint, I can see where this could be really useful. But what if you teach history? What about assigning your student uh, um, uh, Napoleon or, uh, or Gandhi? What would Gandhi's Facebook look like? Who would his friends be? What, you know, what posts would he, he put up? How about some of the characters from Jane Austen's stories? Uh, you could require your students to actually, uh, post in the same, the same vernacular, the same style that Jane Austen's characters speak in. Um, this is, in my opinion, a, a very interactive, uh, uh, alternative to a basic reflective essay or a term paper or something like that. Um, so I'm really excited about how other faculty could use this in their particular disciplines. Science? I mean, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's limitless. And I'd love to see what other faculty do with this. So maybe I can get one of those pages you were talking about. And, uh, and, and if you use it, maybe we can all kind of show each other's work. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Robin Sullivan from the University of Buffalo, and here with me is Cherie Van Putten from Binghamton. And we're going to talk to you about the Tools of Engagement Project and its online, on-demand faculty professional development. The objective of TOPE is to encourage faculty and staff to learn about how to effectively integrate freely available technology tools. Um, it's an opportunity to explore and reflect on the innovative and creative uses of Web 2.0 tools such as audio, blogs, wikis, collaborative spaces. Um, and it's the, a big part of TOPE is that it's an online social network community. Um, let's see. The, uh, it's a, a safe and supportive environment where faculty are learning and, and, and interacting with their peers. The website is um, up here, and uh, you can remember the URL. You all have a sheet in front of you that has the URL on it, but it's uh, pretty memorable, suny.edu slash T-O-E-P. So our acronym at first was T-O-E for Tools of Engagement. We said TOE is not a good one, so it's now called TOPE. So hopefully you can remember that. Um, since I've talked to you last about TOPE, um, it is now a SUNY-wide accessible resource. And that is um, in part due to the support of CPD. And we're putting out a call for phase five. You see a kind of a pre-release about that call on those pamphlets that we shared. And new for phase five, we're going to be partnering with CODE to add a track that focuses on online learning. And we're going to integrate that with the OSCAR rubric and also the Community of Inquiry Framework. framework. Um, right now, there's 19 SUNY campuses involved for this year. And we're hoping to get a bigger cohort for next year. And um, there's incentives that are available for faculty or staff who complete a minimum number of these hands-on activities that are on the website. Um, Feel free to look me up or Cherie or Chris Price or anyone. There's a bunch of fellows that are involved to ask us questions, but you'll get emails about the call for Phase 5, which will be take place the following academic year. 
um, going from, you know, kind of after the first month of classes in October, again, right before the end of the semester ends, for faculty to work through um, all the professional development activities or actually just a selection of them. And we have fellows at each one of the campuses who help support those um, initiatives to kind of encourage faculty and staff to participate and kind of get a learning community kind of like blend kit at the individual campuses. I got it. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, uh, I'm Jay Steele, and I'm from Empire State College. Um, where is the Google Doc? Let's see. Right here. No? There's so many open ones. Okay, <laughs> right here. I got it. Um, so I work with two faculty members to develop a, a MOOC course in Canvas Network. And it's actually running now from um, January 25th. Let me open up the browser and take you there. So it's learning through ePortfolio, and um, we take them there. Um, we have about 450 students enrolled right now. I um, developed this course um, in conjunction with two faculty members on the benefits of personal learning environment, um, and also um, we use a series of blogs and web pages that the students can use. It's about 18 weeks long, and um, so far it's going pretty well. And if you want to check this out, um, you can. Um, and also, I develop a Canva batch in Canvas Network. So students complete all the 18-week um, module, they will be able to earn a batch um, based on the criteria. So basically, like I said, um, they do a general entry. They were supposed to do group work, but I learned that in a MOOC course of 450 students, that is virtually impossible. So it was so much better when they were self-directed. Um, and um, I presented initially the findings um, in, in a Hawaii conference at AAC last year in October. And what we hope to find is that, as an instructional designer, moving forward, um, that, that we can hone this process much better and much more seamlessly for um, how to build um, an e-portfolio. And um, one of the things that we did was we used Weebly as our background. So we showed like an example of how to use Weebly as a professional web page and um, blog. But students are free to use whatever they want. And they put the links up there. And then we have rubrics as well to um, document community engagement, peer-to-peer assessment and things like that. So I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, it's something that we just sort of um, pioneered and with Betty Hurley and Susan Oaks. Thank you. <laughs> Which me and this podium usually do not get along as a result. But let's see if I can get somewhere close to the mic. I'm just going to do a really quick, shameless COIL conference pitch. I know some of you are planning to attend already. For those of you who don't know COIL, we're the Center for Collaborative Online International Learning. In a nutshell, we use online technologies and pedagogies to connect classrooms around the world, give our students a chance to get some international experiences without having to travel to do so. April 25th and 26th here in New York City, although it will not be in this building as it has been in the past. It'll be down at the CUNY Graduate Center. We're having our 10th anniversary conference. We're expecting about 400 people there. We just finished our review of our call for proposals. Over 100 different sessions got proposed this year. I know some of you are already registered. Some of you are already attending. But for those of you who are in thinking about coming or thinking about sending some of your professors or staff to us, register soon. Early bird closes on Monday, February 29th. There's a little bit of a discount, but I did a quick analysis of the people I know are still coming, both our presenters who haven't registered yet as they're waiting for our um, approvals, and those people from our nodal network member campuses here at SUNY and abroad. There's about 150 people on that list. 200 people are already registered. So in effect, I've got maybe 50 or 60 slots left. So if you have po folks who are looking to come down, enroll soon. Um, I do have some flyers here. I won't, I'll send some down around the place if anyone wants to take a look and come on down. For those who don't know who COIL is, there's a little background information on us on the back. And with that, I will yield the floor. Thank you very much. Karen Shuley-Williams from the College of Brockport, a foot shorter than John. Uh, <laughs> 
at our college, in an effort to recruit new faculty to online as well as enlighten those of what it looks like, we've had uh, every semester, the third or fourth week, an online information session. We highlight three faculty. They present a specific component of their course that we've identified as a theme. So faculty engagement, student engagement, rigor, quality, testing, whatever. And then this year we decided, and it has worked well, we get good people get converted, they drink the Kool-Aid at this session, and they can see what the faculty do, and of course we only show off our brightest and best. Well, what we did this year is we changed to an expo, and it was an e-poster session model, and the way I described it to the participants is considering it like speed dating. The faculty each had a session. They had a monitor set up, and there was a monitor on the other side so that they could navigate through their course. The participants could come around their table and watch. And they had 14 minutes to present, and then I got to ring my bell, and then people had to move. And I rang the bell again, and we'd start over. In addition to four stellar faculty, we had, no, five. We had support tables that included library, course development, Blackboard, and technology tools and tips. It was a little loud, but it was very, it was terrific, and it seems to be working, so we'll continue it again. We have lunch or breakfast, and then we, we feed people, and then they, they did the rounds. So it worked great for us. Um, by way of comparison, uh, just in terms of building with these sessions, is last fall we had, Spring we had 44 sections of online, and this spring we have 89 sections of online. So um, we're just about dying capacity building, but it's all very good. Hi, I'm Brandon Murphy. I'm at SUNY ESF, and I'm just going to talk real quick about a program. Uh, it's our first uh, certificate program, and this kind of gets into some of the, the micro-credentialing, micro-degree sort of stuff that we've been talking about today. Um, so this uh, is an advanced graduate certificate of a three-course online sequence in advanced um, chemistry that was developed with support from a Department of Labor grant in partnership with uh, a number of industry partners and a trade organization um, that has, uh, the grant is, is just about ending here, but it was, uh, we had a lot of students taking this for graduate credit, but we've also been offering it in a non-credit format and working with industry that uh, the industry partners were not that interested in getting uh, credit, so we've been doing just certificate of completions, um, but in, in Catering to our industry partners, this is really translated into uh, entire sessions populated by a single company. Uh, so thinking about working uh, with, with our industry partners, we have separate Blackboard sessions so that our industry partners can put all their staff into there and they can talk about proprietary things in the discussion boards. Um, and this is also translated into, uh, or we've also been able to leverage this into doing some in-person in hybrid uh, training partners with both uh, Apple and P&G. So thinking about how we can uh, just coordinate with industry partners to meet these sort of other learners that are outside of the traditional realm, uh, there's a lot of opportunities there and there's also a lot of money there. And will it go or no? All right, there we go. Hi, my name is Amy Valenti. Sorry, it's loud. 
Um, I work for Cayuga Community College. I'm a business professor. And um, one of the challenges for our college, as we've been talking about, is enrollment and um, the fact that the traditional learner population is declining. And so we've been looking at a lot of different options. And certificate programs are, are a great way for us to try to bring in that non-traditional learner. And so um, this fall, I implemented an event management program, which is fully online. And uh, you can see the program. You can see the program uh, here. Let's see here if I can scroll down. We had two programs uh, that were certificate programs, but they were not fully online. So this is the first one. The second one is going to be um, tourism management, which is actually at State Ed right now. Um, and it's been there for a little bit, but we'll get there. Thanks, Fred. <laughs> Um, our next step is actually to uh, create an AAS degree, probably called Event and Tourism Management. And the other cool thing that I wanted to share with you, which I've never been a published author before, so I'm actually going to be um, publishing a book chapter for the, um, the president of AECT. I don't even know what it stands for. You probably do, Alex. <laughs> Association for Educational Communications and Technology or something like that. Um, my, I'm going to school for my doctorate degree at University of Florida, and they, uh, my advisor uh, asked me to submit a proposal for this book, and it got accepted, so I'm going to be writing about this program. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anne from UB. I just wanted to um, plug a couple of programs that we have at UB, the Graduate School of Education, that might be of interest to this audience. Uh, we now offer a fully online PhD program uh, called the Curriculum Instruction in the Science of Learning, and it's a multidisciplinary degree program. Um, we have really great faculty at GSC that work with the student to craft the their course of study. And so if you're considering pursuing a PhD, why not do it at SUNY? Um, we also have <laughs> a, a, a new um, fully online advanced graduate certificate called Online Education, which I'm really excited about. So if you do that program, it's only five courses. If you're, if you're thinking about going back to school, why not start with an AGC? And those courses could roll into a master's or a PhD program. And actually, we have a couple of um, co-community members are, are currently in the sizzle. We call it the PhD program sizzle. Um, Mark McBride and Jeremiah Grabowski. So if you wanted to ask them questions from the student's perspective, I'd encourage you to do so. Okay, so I have two things to share. Um, the first is um, similar to what I mentioned yesterday. We are going to be um, looking for some input on the new service offering from COAT for an annual faculty um, training offering. So anybody who's interested in doing that, if you could put your name here, we're going to meet when today's sessions end right here in this room. Um, and uh, um, you know, welcome anybody who's interested in that to join us um, uh, before we finalize it. And then um, lastly, I just wanted to mention, we've talked a little bit. You've heard references to institutional readiness. Many of your campuses have already engaged in that. If you haven't already, um, I put a link there where you can um, go look at what's there. And um, uh, if you want to talk to me about that while I'm here, feel free to talk to me or send an email to myself or to Penny Wilson, who coordinates that process for us. So that's it. Thanks. Hello, my name is Tony Guzman from University of Buffalo. I was just going to share real quick. Let me see. Oh. Yeah. Wow, it's really sensitive. So, folks may not be aware. Anybody here have heard of Pecha Kucha? 
Ooh, all right. Good deal. Nice. So when that comes up, uh, we've started to use Pachacucha at our school, uh, mainly for the PhD students and the faculty be able to share in an innovative, much more visually entertaining, bless you, uh, method of either their research projects, their dissertations, and the like. And for the first time uh, in two weeks, I'll be part with some other colleagues, our strategic plan for the school, we're going to be doing the update, and we decided to do it at a Pecha Gucha type uh, format. So the idea is that you're doing 20 slides maximum, or actually not exactly 20 slides for 20 seconds a piece, so you're done in 6 minutes, 40 seconds, in and out. So I've got three slides, I've got my timing down like this. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, Lenore Horowitz here from Albany. I'm going to just briefly tell you about this, I think, fascinating, here, fascinating project. Um, it's an initiative through the provost's office at Albany. Um, we've been doing it for a couple of years. Um, and, and I think it's kind of unique. Um, so what I have up here now, this is a, a, a website that uh, we put together. Um, kind of explains everything um, about what we're doing. So, just show you. There's a great image here. So this is the idea behind the Teach 22 project. Um, I'm a professor, okay, and that's um, in, in computer science. So I love the technology. Did some graduate study work, PhD level work in um, curriculum design and stuff. So I have this, um, I, I, I love the technology and I love the pedagogy stuff. So they asked me to come in here as a Teach 22 coach. And the whole idea is, like many institutions, we have um, our faculty technology folks and we have our uh, Institute of Teaching and Learning folks. And um, there's sometimes some disconnect there. And the idea was to try to pull this together. So for a couple of years, I've been doing this. Um, this is a product of one of the things that we worked on. So we have this, and, and by the way, it's only for teaching, um, teaching online. So this is a website that we put together with a whole bunch of resources. And at your leisure, you can actually you can go through that. Um, so. That's one of them. And the other thing I wanted to show you was um, the FTR folks and I work together very closely, um, sometimes on a daily basis. Uh, and we do, we, a couple times a year, <clears throat> we put workshops on together through the Institute of Teaching and Learning. But it isn't only the Institute of Teaching and Learning folks, it is the actual uh, you know, FTR, Blackboard, more technical people. Um, so this is an example of one of our workshops that we put on a couple weeks. We had one a couple weeks ago on grading in Blackboard. And if you didn't want to use Blackboard, we showed you Excel and how to work on that. Um, really interesting project and something a little bit new. Um, and I think something. How's it going? I'm Ian August. I'm an instructional designer at SUNY Maritime College. So we're doing a lot of exciting things this semester. I kind of just thought of one when I was waiting to come up. So we just finished our migration to Blackboard. This is our first semester completely on Blackboard. And, I <laughs> <laughs> um, and it really gets my face out there by doing the trainings and working with everybody. So I think um, that really helped getting a lot of our faculty to adopt Blackboard more and try online learning more. So this semester we're having a lot of senior faculty members coming up to us to try Blackboard. You know, people who a year or two ago said they would never try anything online and never use technology in the classroom. So that's kind of exciting. 
Who's editing this? Um, our engineering department is delivering their first online course ever this semester. We're working with the science department, developing the first science courses ever online this semester to be delivered in the summer. We are So we're testing out um, in a little pilot program a Blackboard tool, which is the goals tool, to try to map the learning outcomes to course assignments and measure them once the students submit their assignments. So there are some cool things in there where it's easy to upload the learning outcomes. It's really easy to connect them to assignments. And you can actually connect them to individual test questions, which is really easy to measure. But it's also lacking some things. So if you're measuring the learning outcomes of a discussion, for example, um, it measures if the student meets or exceeds the outcome by the overall grade of the discussion. So if you have maybe three or four learning outcomes tied to a discussion and 85 means or greater, means the students are exceeding that learning outcome, if they get a 90 on that discussion form altogether, um, Blackboard looks at it as automatically meeting all four of those learning outcomes. So that's not the greatest right now. We're moving our um, course evaluations, which are handed out in paper still, in the classroom, moving that completely online to Blackboard, which a lot of people are happy about. Saving the time printing all the paper, handing them out, collecting them, feeding them through printer machines. So um, our, our head of IR is really concerned that one of the main complaints with that is we're not going to get a high completion rate. So he's doing a test this semester where he's going to see um, how the, even if we get a lower completion rate, do the statistics still match up to what we would get if we still had a higher completion rate? All right, well, my time's up. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kathleen Borby from Monroe Community College, and I'm a business professor. And um, in addition to online, I've also been very involved um, since I started teaching seven years ago full time uh, with service learning, uh, connecting the real world and academia, and my students do projects for real world clients. Um, my point of saying this is like, how do you combine all this stuff? Online learning, service learning, and you heard John Fowler talk about COIL. I've also done a COIL course. I'm in my second course this semester. My first one was last semester. That was incredible where my students did a, uh, a synchronous project and presented it in four different sessions synchronously between UDEM, University of Monterey in Mexico, and MCC. But sometimes we uh, we don't look at our own communities, and I had a world language uh, professor approach me and say, look, um, this is wonderful cross-cultural, but what about cross-cultural within our own community? Um, we have a very a large Hispanic population, so let's create a quote-unquote local COIL course. And um, these people are working, and they need to take online uh, courses. And you could have a service learning slash uh, learning community uh, with in business with my Hispanic students helping them create business plans, marketing plans for emerging Hispanic businesses in the Rochester area. So we're going to be working on that at a workshop to create this, this sort of Venn diagram course of all these different uh, uh, methodologies. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everyone. My name is Wendy Tang. I'm the Associate Provost for Online Education at Stony Brook University. This is the second year of my job, and that I'd like to use this opportunity to introduce my, myself to you, and also to seek your feedback as we have, um, yes, uh, begin to 
formulate the vision for online education. And today I'd like to talk about the online education vision at Stony Brook University. And one of our initiatives is called Stony Brook Online Learning Development Initiative. And then in terms of the vision, our vision is to use online to support our faculty, our staff, and, and also, most importantly, our student. And that will include outreach to student body that were otherwise not on campus, as some of the talks have been, you know, talk about in today's um, session. Yes. And then in terms of... Um, uh, the purpose of online education, when I started my job a year ago, I went along the campus and talked to faculty and staff, and I got a sense there's a kind of a fear from the faculty especially that online education is to replace faculty. So we made it a point to announce and to uh, emphasize in Stony Brook that online education is not to replace the faculty, and uh, it's also not to reduce costs because actually to teach online successfully costs more. And also um, to reduce meaningful student-faculty interaction, that's not our intention. Instead, we want to use online to make learning better, to support our faculty's endeavor in creative uh, activities. And also, especially, we want to use online to target large lecture classes because we all know that's where, where there are minimal student-faculty interaction. So we want to make sure that that's where online can actually be useful, can make learning more effective. And that indeed we need to make, need more, that some students actually need more time, you know, in terms of their learning abilities, what we call, some people we call adaptive learning, in which, you know, students learn that at their own pace and sometimes, you know, certain slides or lectures need to be repeated, that kind of thing. Oh, sorry. Ha. Huh. So based on, uh, I want to, Jump to the um, ESPO, which is a, a large initiative uh, supported by the provost and the president, $250,000 per year for four years. We have actually, uh, like, uh, because of the goal of online, we target to large courses. That means large, meaning those with 200 or more students. There are large number of courses that fit the categories. Right now, uh, yeah, so we are almost done with the um, second year initiative and that uh, if you have any feedback for me, this is my contact information. Thank you. So I'm Stan Scrabbit from Jamestown Community College, and I'm just advocating for working and learning out loud that uh, we should be going out and trying to solve our problems in a very public way. Uh, one of the things that uh, we do at Jamestown Community College is we have a blog to support our team. And before we started doing this, all the team members would basically answer a faculty's question in an email, and they were only serving that one faculty member. By going out and answering the question in a blog, in a blog post, now I'm not only helping that faculty member, because we'll send them to the blog, but now I can help anybody who trips upon that information. So, for example, we're doing a lot in Blackboard. There may be solutions for other folks that are using Blackboard. Come on over to our blog and explore. Maybe you'll find something that you can leverage in your support. If we do this, that reduces the workload. So now, <clears throat> instead of uh, one of my team members going in and uh, reproducing that entry over and over again, they just go back to the blog, do a quick search, pull that entry up, send it on, and they, they're more efficient in, in what they're doing and working. So we're able to pull this information together. So I strongly encourage, go out, work out loud, share out loud. Um, let me know that you're doing this so I can follow you and steal your ideas. Thank you. Okay, cool. That hour went by very fast. <laughs>
Uh, if anyone else has anything that they would like to add uh, to the um, Google Doc there, please feel free to do that. Then we can all, uh, you know, go back later after the conference and check through all of the links that, and all of the resources that are uh, posted there. Anyone online who would like to do that as well, um, uh, please feel free. I'm also hoping that some of the Newton board members, um, while I appreciate that you guys were probably being polite and not, you know, taking up any of the time, I'd love it if you guys would add some stuff so that we can get to know you and some of the projects and work that you guys are doing. So go ahead and, and go to that um, Google Doc and, and post something about you, your work, something that's going on. All right, we're going to uh, pause for a minute while we set up for uh, the next uh, speaker, let's say maybe um, three, four minutes while we set, while we change things around. Uh, and we'll be back uh, in a second to welcome Daniel Greenstein as our next speaker. 